Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to yet uh, one more webinar hosted by IDPC to uh, bring to you some information and knowledge about uh, insurance sector. And uh, this time around, uh, we hope that uh, you have a nice uh, evening, uh, interesting, uh, introspective, understanding uh, something more about insurance. Uh, while we all need insurance, <laughs> but it's always something that I'm sure we can learn from our keynote speaker this evening. So I will ask uh, our honorary chairman uh, of IDPC, Mr. Anand Kapadia, to uh, talk something about IDPC and uh, let's start the evening. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Choji. His Excellency, the Ambassador of India, Sri C.B. George. Tonight's keynote speaker, Sri G. Srinivasan. Members of IBPC, members of CA Chapter Kuwait, and IIT and IIM Association, and various Kuwaiti invited guests, and friends from the business and professional community in Kuwait who may not have been IBPC members. On behalf of the Indian Business and Professional Council, that is IBPC, I welcome you to this special webinar with the hope that it will be found very interesting and useful. As most of you are aware, IBPC Kuwait has been organizing several events over the years. IBPC's key objective is to promote business, trade, investments between Kuwait and India. We have been conducting business and investment seminars on a regular basis. Many of India's stalwarts and pioneers from various industries and business houses have been invited to Kuwait. Tonight's webinar is a continuation of our efforts in this direction. I thank our keynote speaker, Sri G. Srinivasan, for accepting our invitation and present his views on the various possibilities of protecting and safeguarding business houses, industry, and commercial ventures during these unpredictable and uncertain times of this horrible COVID-19 pandemic. When I spoke to him to be the keynote spoke speaker for the webinar, I was very sure that it is an important subject he is so familiar with and well known for. Mr. Srinivasan is an insurance legend in his own right. Having over three decades of insurance experience and holding the position of chairman and MD of several well-known insurance companies in India, he is an ideal professional to speak on tonight's topic. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank the Ambassador Sri C.B. George for having accepting our invitation and to participate in the webinar. I thank you all once again for attending this webinar. Have a pleasant evening. I now request our ambassador, Sri C.B. George, to address us briefly. Thank you so much and have a pleasant evening. Sen Director, National Insurance Academy, Pune. President of IBPC, Sri Anand Kapatia. Office bearers and members of IBPC, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to all of you. To begin with, I would like to extend warm greetings and best wishes for the year 2021, which I hope will be a harbinger of peace, health and prosperity for all of us. At the outset, I would like to thank the leadership and the government of the friendly state of Kuwait for taking special care of the Indian community in Kuwait, especially during the extremely difficult times of COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to commend the IBPC team for organizing this webinar. The topic of the webinar, insurance in the new world of pandemics and uncertainties is contemporary and relevant. The past year or so has been very challenging for everyone. We continue to deal with the pandemic and its evolving complexities. The pandemic is not just a public health issue. It is much bigger than that. It is a major shock impacting all spheres of human lives. The situation continues to evolve. However, we must not lose hope. 
there is no room for despondency. We have collectively shown great resilience and courage. Each section of our society has risen to the occasion and contributing to this collective cause. While our frontline healthcare workers are risking their lives to save millions of others, our scientists and researchers have produced the much needed vaccines. While our businessmen kept the economy running, our financial support system is ensuring that vulnerable are protected from the economic shock. In India, we have made significant progress in our battle against COVID-19. We have handled the public health crisis remarkably well. An all country approach implemented under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister has indeed helped. Our recovery rate of almost 97% is amongst the highest in the world. We have also launched the world's largest vaccination drive with two Made in India vaccines. We are extending assistance to other countries in the world by supplying requisite doses of COVID vaccine. We have justified our rightful tag as the pharmacy of the world. Dear friends, Government of India has also taken a number of initiatives for ensuring the uninsured as part of its efforts to enhance the social safety net. 100% FBI is now permitted for insurance intermediaries. National Health Protection Scheme launched under Ayushman Bharat provides coverage of up to 5 lakh rupees, that is around 8,000 US dollars to more than 100 million vulnerable families. Regulatory framework has been revamped for the development of this sector. Technological developments are also aiding growth of this sector. Currently, there are 110 plus insurtech startups operating in India. The scope and scale of innovations in this space are breathtaking. Some of our largest insurance companies like the LIC, Life Insurance Corporation, New India Assurance, Oriental Insurance have been operating in Kuwait for a number of years, catering not only to the Indian community in Kuwait, but also to the local Kuwaiti market. With the best range of products and ongoing innovation, I am sure that India has a lot more to offer to the local market here. I now look forward to hearing more on this subject from the keynote speaker of the day. I once again would like to wish IBPC all the success for this endeavor and hope that the webinar is useful for all the participants. My best wishes to all. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Gopal Srinivasan. So, Mr. Srinivasan is an insurance industry leader and is the director of National Insurance Academy, Pune, India. NIA is a premier institute of insurance learning in India and only institution of its kind, I am told, which specializes in insurance focused education. He was also the immediate past chairman and managing director of New India Assurance Company. Prior to joining New India Assurance Company, he was the CMD of United India Insurance Company Limited. He is, has the rare distinction of holding two CMD positions of the largest two insurance companies in India. In 2016, Mr. Srinivasan was voted the personality of the year by none other than Asia Insurance Review, which is a leading insurance industry journal. And in the past, he has held chairmanships of prestigious corporates like General Insurance Company, which I, we know as GIC, General Insurance Public Sector Association, India Insurance Singapore. And in uh, more than that, he also had directorships at GIC Reinsurance India, which is one of the largest reinsurance companies in the world. GIC Housing Finance Limited, Prestige Assurance Nigeria, Agricultural Insurance Company of India. Mr. Srinivasan is a proven leader in the industry and has, had, has been at the forefront in leading and adapting the emerging insurance technologies. We all hear about fintech and today I'm sure we can hear about insurance tech. So it is our pleasure to have him with us this evening to address our guests and our IBPC members. Welcome Mr. Srinivasan. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Agarwal, for the nice uh, introduction. Uh, His Excellency Ambassador of India to Kuwait, uh, Executives Office Bearers of uh, IBPC, uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, let me extend a, a very, very happy uh, New Year greetings to every one of you. Uh, may the New Year 
bring you all best of health, wealth and happiness. Uh, uh, let me also take the pleasure of you know thanking IBPC for this opportunity of uh, talking to you on a subject uh, which is uh, which is not generally easy to talk. You know, it's not uh, something you know a very interesting subject. Uh, but I will try my best to make it uh, interesting, useful and also light on a Thursday evening. I don't want to make it as a very, very, you know, very uh, difficult <laughs> uh, high technology or high technical insurance uh, speech. Um, in fact, you know, I, I, I must say that uh, the invitation to talk to IBPC was with me probably a couple of years ago. Uh, when I was planning to make a visit to Kuwait to you know to look at my new India assurance branch there, but somehow that did not materialize and I'm happy that you know uh, after two, two and a half years getting an opportunity of uh, connecting with all of you through the virtual mode, which is today the normal mode of you know uh, connecting to people uh, addressing you know seminars and webinars. So thanks IBPC for this uh, opportunity. Uh, I'll just take a couple of seconds to you know load my presentation. I have a presentation and uh, probably the uh, presentation could take 25 to 30 minutes and I would certainly like this to be more uh, you know uh, participate. I would invite questions and then you know we can discuss uh, those questions so that you know there is a lot of uh, clarity on this uh, very important subject of uh, insurance. Uh, so the subject is is a very very interesting uh, subject insurance in the new world of pandemics and uncertainty now normally you know as somebody who has been in the insurance field almost for four decades you know when we talk of insurance uh, i always felt that probably you know we are not able to make people show a lot of interest on this subject but what the pandemic has done well the pandemic has done a lot of uh, negatives i mean a lot of uh, you know uh, serious health issues uh, for people and a lot of uh, economic issues. Uh, I think for the insurance sector and for the people, there is one silver lining in the whole thing, which is people today understand the need for insurance. Uh, I haven't really seen people asking, you know, what is insurance? What policies I should take? Uh, what does it cover? What does it cover? But today, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people saying, can I take health insurance? Can I take life insurance? Can I have a insurance for my property? So the pandemic has really, you know, created uh, awareness about insurance, something, you know, which we in the insurance industry, in the government, uh, the regulator, all of us have been trying over the years uh, to increase awareness. But I think the pandemic seems to have done it uh, in a very short period of uh, time. So the uh, need for insurance, which has always been there, which will continue to be there, is probably, you know, has changed, has enhanced in a very dramatic way uh, after, you know, the pandemic has struck the world. So that's why, you know, uh, this session, I hope that will really, you know, bring in some inputs to all of you. So, that, you know, you can really make use of it in, in your business or in your personal life. So let me start by saying what is insurance? You know, this is a question people ask. Uh, I mean, am I paying money for nothing? Uh, if there is no claim, am I wasting my money? So friends, you no, know, just very briefly, insurance is a concept where, you know, a lot of people come together, contribute their money as premiums, a fund is constituted, and those who suffer, uh, I mean, get compensation out of that fund. So this is not sim simple, the uh, concept of insurance, and I think if this concept is well understood, many of the misconceptions about the insurance, role of insurance would probably get removed. The next question I would like to ask is, why, why do I need to take insurance? My grandfather did not take insurance. My father did not take insurance. Why are you asking me to take insurance? So the world has changed dramatically. Today, you know, uh, I mean, change has always been happening, but today the pace of change is so high, so dramatic. You know, sometimes you know we are not even able to understand what's happening. Before we could even uh, grasp what is happening around us, uh, probably a lot of things would have happened, and you know we we really find ourselves in serious situation. So insurance is required for security, safety, even confidence, uh, and of course for protection. So let me just uh, elaborate this. Uh, you know, couple of points which you just mentioned. Uh, see businesses, industries, and as individuals, 
there are many possibilities of accidents and losses. You know, people always say that nothing will happen to me. This is a normal. See, uh, normally, you know, psychologists say that uh, human beings are not wired to, uh, you know, understand risks. We always think that I will not get COVID. The virus will not hit me. Uh, my business, my uh, property will always be safe. But you know, this doesn't happen all the time. I have seen people uh, not taking insurance suffering you know uh, their uh, whatever they have earned over the years hard work uh, decades of hard work they have accumulated money one day there's a fire and entire thing getting wiped out and they have no insurance i have also seen uh, in my long years of experience somebody was insuring for 5 years he, he he told me that you know i have been insuring for 5 years nothing happened my money is a waste you have all taken the money uh, and then he didn't insure. Within seven days of his not insuring, his property was completely wiped out. And uh, I know there's nothing I could do because in India, unless premium is paid in advance, we cannot go on insurance cover, unlike many other countries in the world where insurance can be given even on credit. But he took a conscious call of not insuring. And I could see in my very, uh, in my eyes, before my eyes, uh, I mean, the rich gentleman became a pauper and his you know the employees lost their jobs so insurance is very very uh, you know uh, important and uh, let us let no one underestimate the importance of insurance so it's a risk transfer method by which financial compensation is given something happens the uh, insured the person who has taken the policy is financially put back in the same position in which he was before the accident happened so the aspiration of insurance the idea of insurance is to take away the financial impact on the customer i mean the insurance company will not be able to sort out other issues but the financial loss the person has suffered would be uh, you know compensated by the uh, insurance policy by the insurance company so insurance is very very important gentlemen ladies so i i, I would request you to take it very very seriously so let me just look at the insurance ecosystem just to give you an idea of how the insurance uh, industry functions. We have customers. All of you would be customers. Then we have intermediaries. Uh, there are brokers and agents. It varies from market to market. The situation globally is uh, not the same in all the places, but there are intermediaries who help the customers because customers do not know insurance much. The intermediaries know insurance much better. So they advise customers what kind of policies to be taken, uh, what risks to be covered, uh, and what should be the premium. So they are called intermediaries. Then we have the insurance companies who actually issue the policy and take the risk upon themselves. So if something happens to the customer or his business, the pre the claim is given by the insurance company the intermediary doesn't take the risk on himself only the insurance company takes the risk on itself then insurance companies cannot take everything on themselves because uh, friends insurance is a concept of spreading of risk so if the insurance company takes all the risks on themselves and if a big earthquake happens or a big cyclone happens probably the insurance company will become insolvent and the customers who have taken policies with the insurance company would not be able to get their claims. So insurance companies also need uh, to uh, insure themselves what is called as reinsurance. So you have reinsurers. Similarly, reinsurers cannot take all risks on themselves. So they also may go for further spreading of risk with what is called as retrocession and the companies who provide this are called retrocessioners. So these are the various stakeholders in the insurance uh, ecosystem. And you know, you may be dealing with insurance intermediaries or you may be dealing directly with the insurance company. You may not have any intermediary. It's not mandatory in many markets of the world, uh, but uh, you can only you stop there. Then it is for the insurers to reinsure and retrocede. Uh, the reinsurers to retrocede. So this is how the insurance system uh, functions. So moving forward, just wanted to give you an idea of uh, how insurance has, you know, uh, has been uh, taken across the globe. Uh, friends, insurance is an important indicator of the economic development of a country. So some of the Western markets have done pretty well in terms of insurance reach. So there are two terminologies I've used. Uh, I would try my best not to use jargons here. Uh, penetration uh, percentage is 
the amount of insurance as a percentage of the GDP of the country. To what extent insurance contributes to the GDP of the country, gross domestic uh, premium of the country. Density is what is the money an individual, a citizen spends on insurance. So these are the two terminologies which actually, you know, these numbers are very critical to understand how widespread insurance is, uh, whether the insurance sector has made deep inroads into a country. So uh, as, as you all expected, you know, uh, US and UK have very high penetration levels. In fact, UK has, has a higher penetration level of almost 10.61% and density in UK is 4,503 US dollars, pretty high. Uh, coming Uh, is the slide moving? No, no. Okay. Just, just a second, couple of seconds. Sure. Yeah. Is it moving now? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, of course, I haven't missed. You wouldn't have missed much. The earlier slides were very simple, uh, so I'm just going to the current slide. So I was talking about the uh, global, uh, you know, uh, penetration density levels in uh, various uh, countries. Uh, look at countries like uh, China, Brazil, the penetration levels and density levels are low. So the last two countries are I mean, very close to us. India, of course, has a penetration of 3.70 percent, but density is very, very low, which, which really shows that there is still a uh, long way to go in terms of uh, insurance density. I've also given the numbers for Kuwait and, um, and there's obviously potential for insurance industry to uh, you know do much better in Kuwait as well. Am I visible? Yes, you are. Okay, okay. Yes, sir, you're visible. Okay, so let me now talk about the role of uh, insurance sector. So insurance sector has a very, very important role in any country. So I mean, insurance is not only for giving financial protection to the businesses, to the uh, individuals. Uh, it also gives kind of investment opportunities for people. For example, you know, uh, the life insurance industry is an industry which actually uh, helps people to uh, save their uh, money. Uh, so that way, you know, it gives a lot of investment opportunities. But more importantly, the insurance sector in many countries across the world contributes to the economic growth of the country by providing medium and long term funds. You know, if you look at the banking sector, uh, banking sector generally has short term funds. So it cannot really uh, fund infrastructure sector or provide loans for 10 years, 15 years. So these monies come from the insurance companies. Uh, who actually, you know, collect the, uh, you know, savings of the people or other monies from the people uh, when they provide insurance. And these monies are used for uh, investments, investments in critical sectors, uh, investments uh, in the government securities, treasury bills, uh, which can be used by the government for development of the economy. So that way insurance industry uh, also plays a very important role in the economic development of the country. It also gives a lot of jobs. So uh, I would request all of you to understand that insurance sector development is very, very vital for the economic development of any country. Just, you know, talking about uh, the um, uh, His Excellency, the ambassador spoke about the Indian government's role. I think the Indian government, especially in the last few years, has understood the importance of insurance as an important tool of providing social security to the people as a very important risk management tool. So there are a couple of uh, things they have done to act as a catalyst in the insurance space. One is, you know, the crop insurance. As you know, you know, of course, this is also a very important subject at this point of time. The agriculture uh, sector in India uh, contributes only about 15, 16 percent of the GDP of the country, but uh, supports almost 60, 65 percent of the population. Last section of the Indian population lives depending on uh, agriculture. So uh, crop insurance was not there in a big way. So the government came and you know uh, gave a lot of subsidy. Today about uh, 60 million farmers are provided crop insurance scheme. So if something happens to their crop due to you know natural um, events like flood or cyclone or drought, they get compensation. So to that extent, you know the farmers are benefited. This is a major scheme, probably one of the largest schemes in the world. The second one is the health insurance scheme, the Ayushman Bharat. 
the government provides a 5 lakhs health insurance cover for people below poverty line. About uh, 550 million people have been covered almost, you know, uh, 100 million families and 550 million people have been provided this cover. It's easily the largest health insurance scheme in the world. And here, you know, this is not a question of subsidy. The premium is entirely paid by the government. So that way, you know, large section of the Indian population is covered by health insurance by the government. And you know, the difficulties in a huge country like India where the population is pretty high. The third thing the government has done is uh, they've introduced some uh, small ticket, very innovative schemes in life insurance, personal accident insurance, pension scheme. What is important here is there's no subsidy from the government, but the administration of the scheme has been done through banks. It's so simple. The person has to fill up uh, probably you know fill up three or four details sign and give it to his bank the bank uh, transfers the money to the insurance company and if there's a claim the bank helps in collecting the insurance claim and gives it back to the customer credits to his account or it credits to his legal has account so this scheme has also made huge inroads and created a lot of uh, you know insurance awareness in the country benefited a lot of people in rural areas people uh, from the marginal sections of the society. So that way, you know, a lot of steps have been taken by the government to really popularize insurance. The insurance industry in India has been benefited by the kind of awareness these uh, products have created. Let me also talk a little bit on the Indian insurance sector for the benefit of those, you know, in Kuwait who, uh, who are from India and also from the people from Kuwait to understand what's happening in the Indian insurance sector. As all of you would know, Indian insurance sector was opened up uh, 20 years back. Uh, before that, there was only four public sector general insurance companies and one life insurance corporation of India and one reinsurer called General Insurance Corporation of India. Today, you know, the market is very vibrant. There are 58 insurers, 10 reinsurers, 500 broking entities, and, and these numbers are increasing. And the sector grew by a CAGR of 15% in the last decade, one of the fastest growths anywhere in the world, well regulated and capitalized. And what is important is the future of the insurance sector in India is very, very bright, largely because the penetration of uh, insurance in India is still low. So there's a huge opportunities with increasing insurance awareness, with the Indian economy doing very well, the standard of living of the people increasing, the insurance sector is expected to grow by five times in the next 10 years. Uh, friends, you know, phenomenal growth. I would say that insurance sector would be one of the fastest growing sectors in the Indian economy. The economy itself will grow, but even within that uh, growth framework, you will see the insurance sector being one of the uh, fastest growing sectors adding to the GDP of this country. And then, of course, um, liberalization, uh, as you know, uh, initially the FDA cap in in Indian insurance companies was, was only 26 percent. Then that has been taken to 49 percent. Then in case of insurance intermediaries, today 100 percent FDA is allowed by the government. Now we are expecting next stage of reforms. It can happen any point of time. Uh, FDA in insurance can even go to 74 percent or it can even go to 100%. So those reforms are expected to happen within a very short span of time. So some of you are interested in entering the insurance sector. Probably this is probably the best time. There's huge opportunities, huge potential, and the government as well as the regulator has put in a very, very liberal framework for encouraging uh, companies to come in general insurance or health insurance or life insurance or even as reinsurers. So that's how uh, the Indian insurance sector is performing. So I'm very optimistic about the future of this sector in India. Let me now move forward and then, you know, uh, talk about uh, the world of risks. I mean, I started by saying that uh, today the changes are so dramatic. Uh, sometimes we don't know what's happening. So world is full of risks. The risks are increasing. Uh, as we see more and more economic development, we are also seeing more and more risks. The question is, do we understand those risks? Have we taken enough steps to protect ourselves against those risks? I think these are questions we need to ask ourselves uh, because there are many risks which are around us. Just let me first talk about climate risk. Uh, you know, uh, global warming is talked about. I mean, it's been spoken all over the world, including uh, the United States of America. It, it was. Actually, you know, it was a big subject in the uh, presidential elections itself. 
the whole world is having a serious issue as far as global warming is concerned. It's increasing carbon emissions, and we have seen the temperatures going up. Uh, I mean, the scientists say that it went up by 1% in the last century, and it's predicted to increase by 2% uh, by 2100. You know, 2% uh, is can be very, very bad. It, it's not that, you know, just 2%. 40 uh, degrees Celsius becomes 42 degrees. It can create droughts across the world, wipe out a lot of, uh, you know, uh, lively, uh, I mean, uh, living creatures, uh, create huge issues for the uh, mankind. So uh, global warming is a serious issue. Uh, Seawater levels have been increasing. There are many cities in the world. Uh, they may not be there if this trend continues in probably 100 years, these cities can even get submerged. Melting of ice caps in the poles, uh, I know people say that uh, many ice caps are missing year after year, uh, which is a serious issue because they actually provide a balance to the whole world. Forest fires, we are seeing this in California, we are seeing in Australia. What is uh, worse is this uh, the severity of these forest fires. We have seen in the current year also have been pretty high. Uh, these forest fires have been happening every year, but then they are becoming more and more uh, dangerous to the mankind. A lot of uh, insured properties have been destroyed. And then increasing fire accidents across the world is happening. Then natural catastrophes like floods, hurricanes, cyclones. Uh, for example, in India, we, we are now in the last decade has been a decade of natural catastrophes. Every year we get two, three cyclones. You know, in the previous decades, uh, the eastern part of India was always exposed to cyclones. We will have one cyclone in a year or one cyclone in two, three years. But today, every year, whether it is the eastern side of India, or even the western side of India, even the Arabian Sea, which used to be a very calm uh, sea from a cyclone perspective, today is getting a lot of cyclones. And of course, as uh, you are all on the other side of the Arabian Sea, now we are seeing the cyclones uh, in the Arabian Sea, not necessarily going east. They are also taking a turn to the left, and we have seen uh, the Middle East being impacted by cyclones. So a lot of this is attributed to global warming. The economic losses in the last five years, huge numbers, 1,250 billion US dollars, out of which, see, what is happening is even globally, not everyone is insured. So insured losses are only 385 billion uh, which means you know almost one fourth only is uh, insured or uh, one third is insured remaining is uninsured and uh, as a result the people have to bear those losses uh, but if you come to india i just quoted kerala floods you know just to show uh, what's happening in india you know normally we used to have floods in one city like chennai had floods uh, this year hyderabad had floods so cities used to have floods, but in Kerala floods, almost, you know, 40% uh, of the state was under floods, something um, unimaginable. And the unfortunate thing in all these floods in India is most of them are uninsured. The protection gap is as high as 90%, which means, you know, if the uh, economic losses is $100, the insurance industry gets claims of only $10. The remaining $90 are borne by the individuals themselves. So this is a serious climate risk is today considered to be a very, very important risk, uh, which is not only something which is talked about in general, it affects businesses, affects industries, it affects individuals. And this is where insurance solution is very, very badly needed. Let me move to the next one, which is very relevant at this point of time, which is cyber risk. You know, cyber risk, uh, especially, you know, in this COVID era, when a lot of technology is being used, technology was, uh, you know, uh, people started using technology quickly. There, there was not much of preparation because it was all of a sudden. Cyber attacks have increased manifold. I mean, this is a number from uh, WHO five times. Uh, in India, 70 lakh Indian cardholders data were leaked in the dark web. You all know what is dark web, which is, you know, which is kind of an underworld as far as data is concerned. So these data can be used for any purpose. Social media breaches are happening in a regular periodicity. And financial losses, you know, I have seen instances of uh, huge money, cyber attacks, banks losing huge monies. Some of, some of those information will not even come out in public because if it comes out, it could affect the reputation of the bank. I know of one major instance of an Indian bank uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, of a bank in India. Uh, let me not be misunderstood when I say Indian bank. It is not Indian bank. A bank in India would have lost hundreds of millions of dollars. There was a cyber attack. The money was taken out. The money was taken to a bank account in Hong Kong. But fortunately, the bank quickly moved uh, at the very highest political level and uh, uh, the United States help was taken. The money was stopped at Hong Kong and the money was recovered. So if there has been a delay of even a few hours, the money would have been, uh, I mean, uh, taken out and that would have been probably one of the biggest losses anywhere in the world. So financial losses are also happening in a big way due to cyber attacks. Uh, in fact, you know, this is some information. 72% of Indian companies have experienced some kind of cyber attacks. It need not necessarily be a loss to them. Some cyber issues. And today, you know, this is an issue which is occupying the minds of uh, the top management and the boards of directors. Today, you know, uh, whenever we do programs for the directors of insurance companies, cyber risk is a major cyber risk in the sense not from an insurance perspective. Cyber risk to the insurance company is a major risk. They all talk about because, you know, so much data is available. Uh, personal information is available and then monies are involved. So cyber attacks can really cause uh, problems to all of this. Phishing, ransomware, spy, spyware exposures. These are all happening in a, I mean, even as individuals, all of us are facing this day in and day out. And what is more important is something which has not been discussed. Cyber attacks can even cause property damage and business interruption. For example, if you have an industry or if you have a business, uh, if you are, if you use technology uh, in a big way, uh, cyber attacks can even you know take control of uh, the you know uh, what is programmed, and uh, we have seen that it has the potential to cause even damages to uh, properties, uh, create uh, fires, create other kinds of breakdowns, and then you know consequent business interruption loss can also happen. So cyber risk is not something very simple. Uh, many of us tend to underestimate as if it's something relating only to our credit cards and debit cards. This is a huge ramification. So this is something which needs to be protected. Then, of course, let me come to pandemic. How can I miss a pandemic? So you know these numbers, 100 million people impacted, 2 million dead. Second wave in many Western countries, the second wave, and it's more uh, deadly than the first one. You are seeing what's happening in US, what's happening in UK, many of the European countries. Uh, so they are talking of different uh, mutations of viruses. Uh, but what, is, what the problem is, it's deadlier than the first wave. Serious economic issues is going to be a global recession in the current year. Many of the economies are going to degrow. In India, we're expecting at least uh, eight to nine percent degrowth in the current year. We are hoping that next year we will make it up. Uh, but uh, globally, you know, there is an economic crisis. And when economic crisis happens, uh, it doesn't affect the rich people. It always affects people at the middle of the pyramid, at the bottom of the pyramid. So this is what we are seeing across the globe. Vaccines, yes, India has done a great job. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm from Pune, so. I must say that uh, Pune has done a great job in terms of uh, supplying a large amount of vaccines to the world. But then that vaccine unit itself had a major fire loss a few days back. So what I'm saying is no one is immune to uh, risk. Everyone is uh, exposed to risk. So vaccines are there. Hopefully uh, with vaccines, we should find a solution. Right now, global supply chain issues are there. Lockdowns have caused a serious problem. Not only in India, across the world, businesses have been impacted. And uh, I've heard people saying, you know, I had my fire policy, I had my business interruption policy, but these lockdowns uh, policies did not come to my rescue because pandemic was not covered in most of the insurance covers. Nobody really anticipated pandemic. Neither the insurers offered the cover nor the customers wanted that cover because nobody understood that cover. But there were quite a few customers across the world, like you know, Wimbledon had covered pandemic. The Tokyo Olympics had a pandemic cover. So there are a uh, few of them who took pandemic cover uh, as if it's something quite normal and they were uh, benefited. Uh, they could cover their losses. So the business interruption cover of customers did not cover the pandemic because there was no 
cover to it. So this is uh, something you know uh, people have to now keep in mind when they look for their uh, insurance covers in future. So let me now move to liability. So today liability is a major scenario uh, across the world. Uh, the laws are being changed to increase the uh, liabilities of businesses, of individuals and awareness about rights and people are willing to uh, enforce their rights. They go to courts. They are, uh, I mean, it's not uh, those days where people say, OK, it's happened because it had to happen. It is destiny, it's providence. But today people are not allowing uh, these things to go away. So people are going to enforcing their legal rights. Corporate governance has become a huge byword. So today there's a need for directors and officers liability for all the companies to protect the directors and officers. Regulators have become very active. Uh, today regulators across the world are collaborating to make sure that more and more regulations are put in place. So compliance has become a serious issue. Consumer awareness has increased. So people are filing cases in consumer forums and other legal uh, forums to enforce their rights. So liability covers have also become very, very important for, uh, you know, uh, for industries and uh, businesses. Health. Health, of course, a pandemic has really uh, given a fillip to health insurance. Today, uh, in India, at least I can say that uh, because health insurance is available for people below poverty line through the government scheme, but people above poverty line do not have health insurance unless they take a policy. And across the world, of course, there are countries where health insurance is automatically given, but those countries where health insurance is not given, it, this has become a very, very important requirement for individuals. Uh, what we are seeing is not only pandemic, even otherwise, uh, cost of healthcare is increasing. I mean, uh, healthcare uh, facilities have increased. Med medicine has advanced substantially. Today, you have treatment for everything, but it's expensive. And life expectancy is also increased, creating a, another problem of uh, you know senior citizens. And we have seen, especially in, in the emerging countries like India, the senior citizens have a huge disease burden. The quality of life is not all that, not all that great. They live longer, but then they live with diseases. So they need some kind of a protection and they have not taken health insurance in the past. If they go and ask for health insurance now when they are 65 or 70, the insurers are not willing to give because they know that they are going, there are going to be claims. And then lifestyle diseases like diabetes. So these are all increasing. So the need for health insurance has uh, very high. And pandemic has only added to the problem. Uh, it, it has not created, it has added to the problem. And you know, we have seen that in case of uh, pandemic, even the most developed healthcare systems in the world were challenged. I mean, we hear this uh, day in and day out from United States of America, from UK, that you know, they are finding it difficult to provide facilities for everyone. Uh, because pandemic uh, has been so bad in those countries. But look at countries like India and other emerging countries. Uh, healthcare uh, infrastructure is pretty low. And even whatever infrastructure we have are uh, situated in urban centers in cities. Uh, because India spends only 1.3% of GDP. So we need to spend some 5% or 6% of GDP if our healthcare institutions need to go to global levels in terms of availability of infrastructure. India has good doctors, good medical facilities, but then they are located only in urban centers. So hopefully we are hoping that in the current budget, which is expected in the next few days, there will be a bigger allocation towards health, especially in the context of pandemic. This is very, very important uh, for the health of the people. Now let me get into an area which is which all of you uh, as customers of insurance uh, would understand would show a little bit of appreciation of what I'm saying. Generally, you know, uh, insurance, uh, there is a trust deficit. I think this is something I've been in the insurance industry for four decades, but I must admit there is a trust deficit on insurance. Why? I mean, there's generally a, a perception that whenever there is a claim, insurers show the fine print. They say condition number eight, sub clause two, the claim is not payable or claim is payable only so much. So there is a perception. Claims are rejected or claims are paid less. There are warranties conditions. So uh, claims are not paid because of breach of those warranties. Then uh, the amount of claim is also less because of 
deductibles which are in the policy depreciation under insurance so this is i mean these are some of the common you know uh, talks so this actually makes people feel uh, is insurance uh, good is it going to give me a complete protection uh, so these are areas where uh, i think there's a responsibility both on the insurance industry as well as on the customers uh, to bridge this gap this is coming largely because of lack of understanding of the concept of insurance uh, general perception that insurance covers everything and whatever i suffer will be paid in an insurance policy and uh, that is not the case so the way insurance is understood by the insurer is different from the way insurance is understood by the customer so this uh, needs you know a little bit of collaboration bridging of uh, gap in terms of understanding so let me try to uh, go a little bit deeper on this before that so based on what i said you know there are certain i'm just going to i'm not getting into the details of uh, the policies i'm just going to uh, mention uh, you know a few uh, policies which are very very uh, important fire insurance engineering insurance if somebody has projects business interruption insurance maybe including pandemic i mean i would request every one of you to look for covers may not be easily available but at least you know you make sure that you have a full cover cargo insurance if you have movement of cargo exports imports liability and cyber which is just mentioned i'm not talking of motor insurance because i know that's probably the most popular form of insurance and mandatory in many countries so these are policies a businessman needs a person with an industry needs to have definitely you should not really think that uh, he will save some money by not taking a policy these policies are today absolutely essential Uh, for you know, uh, for having a peaceful sleep, if I may use that uh, word. In case of individuals, uh, as as a person, health insurance, life insurance, and a pension product, personal accident insurance, and home insurance. These are needed, and I think everyone should find a way of covering himself. I think this is the way a person is adequately insured. it can be uh, you know uh, you need not worry about what will happen to him so some suggestions as i am coming to the close of my presentation uh, maybe these suggestions can help in removing some of those misconceptions about insurance the remove the uh, reduce the trust deficit the first thing is insurance is a legal document i think that's what uh, all of you should understand it is not uh, maybe the insurance salesman is a very nice man he talks very nice that doesn't mean that uh, he is going to pay all the claims which are not covered in the policy so please understand it's a legal document so treat it seriously uh, spend time on insurance many times what we have seen is when the insurer goes to the customer for taking insurance the customer does not spend adequate time he just sign some forms he says you cover uh, i mean i am not too much concerned i don't have time so it is better to spend time while taking a policy rather than spending time during a claim because uh, spending time during a claim is not going to be productive because by that time everything is frozen so i would suggest every one of you to spend some time understand what is covered what is not covered what should be the sum insured what are the duties and obligations what are the conditions so that you know there is a full clarity on insurance not to treat insurance as a cost but as an investment because if you treat it as a cost you would try to reduce it so it's better that insurance is perceived as an investment of for risk management not to cut corners don't say that you know i don't want this cover or reduce this peril reduce this extra cover uh, unless you are sure that you don't need it so cutting corners should not become penny wise pound foolish insure for full value do not insure for less value you may pay less premium but when a claim happens the condition of under insurance will apply and you will your claim will be reduced take reinstatement covers what it means is if a loss happens you will get the cost of replacing the property not only the market value of the property so you are going you will be in a position to replace your machinery re, uh, redo your business so reinstatement covers take business interruption covers uh, because uh, not only you suffer material damage you also have a 
follow business interruption. Pandemic extension I mentioned. Uh, any other additional covers? Look at it, understand and take a calculated view. Uh, choose good intermediary, insurer, reinsurer, because you need good intermediaries to service your business. You need good insurers to pay claims. Reinsurer, I'm, though you are not dealing with reinsurer, I'm saying there are some policies where the reinsurer plays an important role. And if he is not good, then you know, your insurer will not be able to uh, come to your rescue. Finally, you know, uh, quality insurer is not cheap insurer. So I think many times, you know, uh, I've seen customers only looking at the premium. Uh, so this is not something where premium alone should decide uh, who should be your insurer. So thank you very much. Uh, I think I've taken more time than what I really anticipated and I would like to deal with some questions. Mr. Srinivasan, thank you so much. Uh, Yes, Mr. Srinivasan, that was really a wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, so insightful, uh, especially uh, you know when you are speaking and it matches with the pointers in the slide. So one is actually able to comprehend a lot more information that you were sharing here. Uh, really, thank you. And uh, now let me open the session to uh, question and answers. And uh, so uh, let me. There is a. I'm going to put you on again and whatever questions come through, I'll read it out and then you can yeah. answer them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have one question which already came to me by WhatsApp. It's uh, from our friend <laughs> Mr. Nan Kapadi. He says, what percentage of the claims are denied to the client's family in spite of paying the life insurance premiums as scheduled and what are the possible reasons why claims are denied? Uh, I think the question is I think he has used the word life insurance but right. I, I find you know life insurance the uh, settlement of claims is pretty high because the life insurers do a very strong underwriting they look at uh, you know the medical uh, they do even medical examination and look at various aspects so my uh, especially this is an indian experience uh, the um, settlement of claims unless it's a case of fraud i think generally happens in case of death in case of maturity it's 100 percent because this is something uh, which has happened in the indian market after three years no life insurer can question any policy they can't say you made a wrong representation you didn't disclose so the there was a legal change in india a few years back after three years life insurers cannot ask any questions about the proposal. They have to pay the claim. So that's a protection which is available. Mm. Uh, because, uh, in case of non-life, it varies from product to product. Non-life, the situation is much more complex because general insurance is a very complex line of business, like a health insurance or a motor insurance. Uh, it's much more complex as compared to life insurance. Right, right. Thank you. OK, so now we have one, our friend Mr. Bharat uh, Galeria. What does Ayushman insurance cover and is it health or life insurance coverage? Uh, it's a health insurance cover. The sum insured of 5 lakhs Indian rupees is a floater cover for the whole family. It covers the head of the family, uh, spouse and also children. So the idea is uh, the government itself has tied up with many hospitals across the country. They have packages. If somebody has a health issue, uh, he just has to go to the hospital and there is no cash payment, the cashless basis, and uh, he takes treatment, he walks off, the government pays the money uh, or government uh, either through a scheme, trust or an insurance company runs a scheme. So it's a cashless health insurance scheme and it's been, uh, you know, very, very useful to the people who could not have thought of health insurance. You know, in India, there are many, especially in rural areas, had no access to health insurance. So because of this, you know, they were ignoring their health. They will not go for a heart treatment. They will not go for a, you know, um, any other kind of treatment. Today, they are able to take these kinds of surgeries and treatments. In a way, you know, the health of the country has improved because of Aishman Bharat. Mm, right. Uh, then one more question from the same gentleman is, is critical illness insurance as a living benefit uh, available in India? And if yes, how popular yes. is it? 
it is available in india uh, it is uh, see actually in india there are three uh, sectors one is life insurance general insurance third is we have standalone health insurance companies so all the three companies do health insurance so in life insurance companies in india are allowed to give only benefit critical illness products they give it separately they also give it as an add on to the life insurance products the general insurance companies and standalone health companies uh, while they predominantly give the normal indemnity that is you cover the expenses benefit policies are also quite popular but i would say that uh, as compared to this reimbursement schemes Uh, benefit policies are relatively of a smaller component in the indian market at this point of time thank you sir uh, another question is uh, post covid scenario will there be any significant modifications on insurance concepts coverage terms and conditions if so please uh, specify a few examples see the, there is a greater understanding of the concept of insurance uh, so there are going to be see what has happened is uh, during covid there are customers who are not really happy with the insurance products they were having for example i mentioned about uh, the business interruption insurance which is a major issue across the world uh, you know there are people who have taken business interruption insurance and uh, they are they are saying my business was closed for two months okay the government asked me to close down or i could not open because of the pandemic Uh, so can i get a claim so the insurance company said that there is no damage to your property it is only virus so there is no claim so this is being you know legally contested in some of the western markets so now the way business interruption cover is taken will kind of see a change there are there are going to be non damage business interruption covers that is with, there is no need for a material damage fire or any such incident still uh, insure the customers would like to claim so the products can undergo change the pandemic cover which is today excluded in all the policies people will ask for those covers health insurance will undergo a change because pandemic we are not sure that we are uh, this pandemic uh, is the last of the pandemics Uh, we don't know so pandemic health insurance covers will be required life insurance cover more and more people are now looking at it because a lot of people have died because of this uh, disease so these are the kinds of changes which are going to happen in the insurance space there is a lot of interest and the insurers will have to respond to the request of the customers for various covers okay so my own question is now on life insurance uh, since you know pandemic obviously is not specifically covered but if somebody passes away then does is he covered <laughs> the indian market took a, indian market took a stand that pandemic is covered in the life insurance oh, okay. so i don't know about uh, kuwait but if it is a specific exclusion in the it depends on the contract the insurance document if the insurance contract excludes pandemic he will not get a claim but if the insurance contract is silent then a pandemic is covered that's how the indian market has covered all uh, covid deaths uh, uh, who those who are taken policies uh, and what about so this, uh, sorry this is where it's important to see what kind of a policy is being issued so th- that's the point i made you know normally none of us go through policies even i may not go through policies so we have to read the policies think that it is a legal document fair Okay. and just to be you know, stepping out i mean what about uh, like in italy and europe and england and so many places you know a lot of deaths happened right on the onset of uh, the pandemic so their insurance policies would you have any idea what happened there were they covered not covered so i think I it was a it was a mixed bag there were some contracts which excluded pandemic there were some contracts which uh, had no exclusion so those who had no exclusion uh, ended up uh, paying claims those right. insurers who had put the pandemic exclusion in their policies did not pay so uh, right. it was a mixed bag yeah right right, right. okay uh, uh, one more question from our friends here are regulatory bodies in india on a national level or a state level it's at a national level there is only one regulator uh, for insurance sector called insurance regulatory and development authority of india there is one regulator for the banking which is the bank of india central bank one regulator for the capital markets securities exchange board of india sebi so india has uh, one central regulator uh, unlike us which has you know regulators state wise india has a central regulation right 
and and also the licensing in india is regulated by the nia uh, it's regulated by irdi the regulator the regulator itself all right fair enough yeah the regulator uh, gives the license yes right 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 so i have one question i received on my whatsapp again it says uh, has the opening of fdi uh, bef even before the improved insurance index uh, has a density has it impacted the density in india density has gone up but it is still not to the global levels so uh, see one thing is indian premium rates are low as compared to the global premium rates so that's one reason which is pushing the density down you know as you generally know uh, india of course things are literally cheaper as compared to the global markets right. so it has gone up uh, but there is still lot of scope to go up there is still lot of potential for people to take insurance policies right 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 and so do you think there will be new uh, since you know pandemic has brought about this new sort of a change right yeah. so there is going to be new more innovative products that will come out yeah quite a few innovative products have come in india for example you know it was driven by the regulator uh, we had a product called uh, corona kavach i mean it's an indian uh, so this product you know uh, it was sold for a short period you know 3 months 6 months so it was sold in a big way and you know a lot of those people who had to take treatment were covered by this so it's a oh. specific innovative product similarly there is a corona rakshak product which is a benefit product somebody was asking about a benefit product so somebody contracts uh, covid he will get a fixed amount right. so these two products were introduced as a result of uh, the uh, virus and uh, we are seeing lot of innovation in the indian market even otherwise like you know a lot of those insure techs are coming out with innovations insurance industry itself is also innovating so it's a very vibrant growing market so innovation is the centerpiece of uh in uh, i mean growth so that's what is happening right right so we have a huge uh, statement here i'm not sure if it's a question but i'll read it out it says during covid 19 situation all businesses were under pressure due to lack of new business but insurance companies faced dual impact of less business and paying huge claims considering the fact that now maximum solicitation of insurance is coming directly from customers in this situation whether as a life insurance company we have to seriously think for mortality rates morbidity and of course we think on moral hazard so <laughs> i'm not sure it's a question <laughs> yeah i think it must be somebody who from the insurance sector so uh, uh, <laughs> no see uh, uh, obviously life insurance underwriting health insurance underwriting becomes very very important because the aspect of moral hazard is pretty high for example somebody was contracted covid can try to take a life insurance policy for the first time or a health insurance policy so the insurers will have to set up uh, you know systems uh, to make sure that these uh, you know uh, these moral hazards are taken care of so that that's been done by the industry you know people uh, are taking proper precautions uh, even otherwise uh, there are enough policy provisions to take care of that even if somebody takes a policy fraudulently and later it is found out he is not going to get the claim uh but the other point which he was asking is is there going to be any change in the uh, you know uh, uh, premium rates based on higher mortality or morbidity i think uh, at least as far as india is concerned i think this is a situation in many other countries uh, that has not yet happened the life insurance industry has not really looked at because uh, even though you know there are deaths but considering the size of the population it is not really much Uh, maybe in countries like us uh, us also i would say considering the whole size of the population it is not really much so uh, that way to uh, till now it has not impacted the the way premiums are calculated premiums are charged right 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 <coughs> so we have um, uh, one question here it says in the pandemic situation the non contestability clause will it play a role in settling a life claim uh even actually i'm not even sure what that what is yeah, the yeah see as long i mean the insurer cannot question the uh, uh, which is what i meant for example in india after 3 years the insurer cannot question the disclosures oh, made right. Right. Uh, for example somebody is uh, given wrong statements about his health uh, hmm. normally the insurers can contest those claims saying it's a misrepresentation or a non disclosure but after 3 years people don't uh, are not allowed to question
Global assets will increase and premium will also increase. Right. Oh, we have an interesting question here. He says, if I've taken an insurance, uh, say f from uh, protect from MetLife from Kuwait and paying in USD, is it okay to move to another country? Will it still be valid? Absolutely. I mean, the, you just have to keep your insurer informed, but as far as life insurance is concerned, it's valid wherever you are. So there is no issue at all. Right, right, right. Well, uh, Mr. Shrinivasan, uh, that brings us to an end because I'm out of questions. <laughs> we don't have any more questions. Uh, but really, what a wonderful evening as to uh, chat with you and uh, hear your uh, you know perspective on insurance. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And, thank uh, you. I also my PC uh, Kuwait really uh, once again. God bless you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you and uh, my best wishes to all of you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. All the best. Sir.